My dearly beloved in Christ, in today's epistle, we have very familiar words of St. Peter. In fact, Holy Mother Church places them in the divine office at the last part of the prayers for the day called Compline. So it's something that priests pray every day. We read this verse of St. Peter. Be sober, be watchful, for your adversary the devil as a roaring lion goes about seeking whom he may devour. And indeed, the devil is constantly on the prowl to try and bring our souls down, to tempt us, to look for those times of weakness that he might tempt us. And we need to be aware of that, to be watchful, to be vigilant. But St. Peter also says these words that are very striking. He says, cast all your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. And we must remember that truth, that God cares for every one of us. We refer to this care, this loving watchfulness of God as divine providence. That God did not just simply create us and then forget about us, but He watches over us every day and every night, every moment of our lives. He knows all of our most secret thoughts, desires, temptations, difficulties, discouragements, and He is intimately concerned with each of us. He watches over us lovingly. And this loving care of Almighty God for each of us is beautifully brought out in today's Gospel. We have this parable of the Good Shepherd who goes and searches for a sheep that has been lost. He knows all of sheep and he takes them from one field to another and then counts them and realizes that one is missing. And as our Lord says in the parable, He leaves the 99 in the desert to go searching for the one that is lost. And when He has found it, He puts it upon His shoulder and brings it back to the flock and He calls His friends together and says, Rejoice with Me because I found the sheep that was lost. And our Lord goes on to give us the application of the parable. He says there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who is converted than over 99 just who have no need of repentance. This is how great the love, the mercy of the sacred heart of Jesus is for us. And what joy it is for our divine Lord when one sinner is converted, gives up his sin, changes his life, and this brings up an important aspect of contrition. Several weeks ago, our sermon was on contrition and the importance of having that deep sorrow for sin. But if we truly are sorry for sin, then we also have what is called the firm purpose of a minute. And as you know from your catechism, those two things sorrow and purpose of amendment are essential elements of a good confession. And if we find that we do not make much progress in the spiritual life, likely it is because our purpose of amendment is weak. It is half-hearted. It is not as solid and as determined as it could be. So the purpose of amendment is very important because we will make progress according to our determination. We must have that strong resolve. And if we do, again, we will make great progress. Now it doesn't mean when you go to confession and you have a fear that through weakness you may fall again, that doesn't mean you were lacking in the purpose of amendment. But here and now, my determination is I will not offend God again. That is what we mean by the firm purpose of amendment. Ask our Blessed Mother and our Divine Lord to help you to have as much determination and firmness in that resolve as possible. Because that is what leads to spiritual progress and true amendment. Now you notice in this Gospel at the very beginning, it says the publicans and sinners were drawing near to our Lord to listen to Him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, this man welcomes 
sinners and eats with them. And it has often been said our Lord loved sinners. And that's not really accurate. Because we should say our Lord loves repentant sinners. And in fact, you often find this, where our Lord will cure an individual. And then he will say, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. So we, don't, we want to be careful. We don't want to make our Lord out as though he just simply forgives sins and doesn't mind that someone sins again. Quite obviously, being God, being all holy, he detests the smallest sin. And he desires to see us eliminate sin, even venial sin, as far as possible from our lives. And with the grace of God, it is possible to eliminate at least all mortal sin and even deliberate, fully deliberate, venial sin. And that must be our goal. That must be our desire. That must be our resolution. And one of the things that helps in doing so is again that resolve, that firmness in our resolution. As I said, we see this often. Our Lord saying, go and sin no more. Remember the story of the woman caught in adultery. And they were ready to stone her to death. But they asked our Lord, what do you say? And he wouldn't condemn her. He was simply writing on the ground. And all he said to the crowd was, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. And then he turned his back to the people and kept writing on the ground. And one by one they dropped their stones and left. And finally our Lord found himself alone with this woman. And he turned to her and he said, Has no man condemned you? And she said, No man, Lord. And then he said, Go and sin no more. So I reiterate, if we simply look at our Lord as one who is always forgiving sin, and leave it at that, we're missing something essential. Our Lord's love for repentant sinners. Sin no more. The same thing with St. Mary Magdalene. Look at this woman who had been so sinful, committed so many grievous sins, lived such a lost life, and then heard our Lord speak. Her heart was touched with grace and she gave up sin once and for all, forever. She came and knelt at His feet and washed His feet with, his, with her tears. And our Lord said, many sins are forgiven her because she has loved much. And St. Mary Magdalene was faithful even to the foot of the cross. She was one of those faithful women who ministered to our Lord and followed Him. And then after His resurrection and ascension, live a life of penance and prayer for the rest of her days because she took to heart those words, go and sin no more. So let us remember the importance of repentance. We think during the month of June of the sacred heart of Jesus, the wonderful love and forgiveness and mercy of our divine Lord. But let us be careful also to remember his desire that we amend. Be careful never to be presumptuous and think, well, I can sin because our Lord is merciful and will forgive me. That is to do a terrible injustice and injury to our Lord. To use His very love and mercy as a justification to offend Him. Let us truly love the sacred heart and prove it in the way we live by our amendment. Remember these words of St. Peter, cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. Our Lord loves us. He watches over us. He knows our every thought and action and word, and desire and dream and wish and difficulty. And he lovingly watches over us. But we on our part must be firm, must be determined, must avoid the occasions of sin and persevere in loving and serving our dear Lord who loves us so much.